Hey, yo, top five rock website.com. I just had to react to this. Uh, it was starting to piss me off. This Breakfast Club, they do another terrible political interview. Breakfast Club at this point is known for terrible, horrible political interviews. And it started back 2016. I wrote this article. This is my website. I wrote this article. The Breakfast Club should be publicly shamed for this Hillary Clinton interview. I wrote this back in 2016, bro. This is how, this is long time ago, right? And I just noticed how terrible their interview with Bernie Sanders was. And just to briefly go over this, just so you can get some context before I go right into this interview with uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, this is how they interviewed Bernie Sanders. This is how they interviewed Hillary Clinton. Their first four questions to Hillary Clinton, they started off laughing. Is it true that you played dominoes and slammed it on the table when you won? I, I swear to you, you can go watch this interview. It's right here. They asked her if she played dominoes, bro. First question. They started out laughing. Second question. Historically, you've always worn a pants suit. Is it true that Steve Harvey was your inspiration? <laughs> So they're like, oh, you're, they're basically telling her she's invited to the kickout. Oh, you played dominoes and slammed it like we do? <laughs> oh, Steve Harvey, huh? How did Bill Clinton propose to you? Nothing on policy. Fourth question. A lot of black people don't trust you because you mispronounce, mispronounced Beyonce's name. Have you learned to say it correctly yet? Uh, uh, uh. Right? And I would be cool, right, if, now, well, I would never be cool in the middle of a, of, of a primary, a Democratic primary, right? But it would be understandable if that's how they interviewed everybody, right? You know, funny Marco, he's awkward with everyone when he interviews. He just doesn't be serious with some people and then be awkward with others. You know, he's consistent. But days later, or maybe this was days before, months later, the interview with Hillary Clinton was 4-18-2016. Bernie Sanders was 2-29. Months before, this is their first few questions with Bernie Sanders. First off, we don't have much time. <laughs> they started off with they started off hostile. Like, yeah, we don't have much time. With Hillary, they started off with laughter. Why do you think Hillary is more connected with African American voters than you are? What? Let's talk about undocumented immigrants in this country. What do you think should happen with that? Lots of African Americans felt that during Ferguson, you weren't there. Are you going to stand with African American people? Fourth question: Ninety-four crime bill helped feed the prison industrial complex. They talk, look how they're slamming Bernie Sanders with the policy questions, but they're fucking asking Hillary Clinton about Beyonce in pants suits. They ask, they have the nerve to ask Bernie Sanders about the 94 crime bill when Hillary Clinton's husband wrote that crime bill and Hillary Clinton voted for that, and they didn't ask her about that at all in their interview with her, which happened after the Bernie Sanders interview. The tone was just totally different, right? So Breakfast Club is already known for having terrible political interviews. They're obviously one-sided. I won't even I won't even say that the Breakfast Club is uh, biased towards Democrats or biased towards the left, because Bernie Sanders is more left of Hillary Clinton, and they obviously had a bias towards Hillary Clinton. They're biased towards the establishment Democrat who's put before them. And obviously that failed because Hillary Clinton lost to Trump in that election, right? This is the same Breakfast Club when Joe Biden, or the same Charlemagne, I forget if it was Charlemagne or the Breakfast Club, but this is the same people when Joe Biden came on and told them, you're not black if you don't vote for me. And they just chuckled. But then they have the nerve to slam other political candidates. They're so biased and the, their interviews are so terrible with politicians when they're interviewing Lil Baby and all this and Destroy Lonely and all this, okay, cool. But when it comes to politics, bro, absolutely terrible. And I, I'm not going to lie, I already watched some of this Vivek Ramaswamy interview. I watched like a couple minutes of it. It pissed me off so much, I'm like, yo, I got to react to this. I'm going to just do the part with Tesla and Figaro. I'm going to just get right into it. Tess, you good? Yes, I, I do. Um, so I, I've heard a lot of, you know, what you think and your vision. And I am I'm a very practical person and I want to kind of oppose sure. to talking about your opponents. Let's talk about you for a moment and let's actually talk about your policy. Um, explain to me. For once, the Breakfast Club want to talk about policy. But when the established Democrat that their that iHeartRadio wants them pr to promote comes on, 
we want to talk about pantsuits, Steve Harvey and Beyonce, and hot sauce. They talk, they, they asked Hillary Clinton that same interview, do you keep hot sauce in your bag? I'm not even joking. Tesman Figueroa, I'm sure Tesman has some questions. Tes, you good? Yes, I do. I do. Um, so I, I've heard a lot of, you know, what you think and your vision. And I am, I'm a very practical person. And I want to kind of oppose sure. to talking about your opponents. Let's talk about you for a moment. And let's actually talk about your policy. Um, explain to me your position on this civic duty. They want to talk about policy when someone they don't like is on. But when Hillary Clinton comes on in 2016, you're asking her about pantsuits, Beyonce, and Steve Harvey. Duty voting. Sure. So my position is, I think that every kid who graduates from high school should know the minimums about the country that we require an immigrant to know about the country in order to become a citizen. So there's a test. My mom had to pass it. Every immigrant has to pass it to this country that asks you some basic questions. What are the three branches of government? What branch of government does... Okay, and I know the point he's going to make here. I can see why some people would be adverse to this idea. On paper, it sounds decent. Like, yeah, if you're voting, you should at least know somewhat basic stuff about the government. But I understand why some people would push back because in the past this type of thing and like a poll tax and other things have been used to discriminate against groups of people so i can understand why someone will push back i don't necessarily disagree with the idea but i totally understand why there would be pushback but that's not what Leslie figaro gets out here the u.s president leads some basic questions about what is the bill of rights it's like a multiple choice exam or some of them you write in I think that if we're going to ask immigrants to pass that test, as we should, I think every 18-year-old who graduates from high school should have to pass that as well because young people, it goes back to that issue of pride. You don't value a country that you don't know something about. You don't value something you inherit. You value something you have a stake in creating, in building, or knowing something about. Fair point. So, so how do we think big about this? Well, young people, as I told you, most of them, very few of them vote, as it stands today. Facts. Super small numbers. And apparently 60% of them say they would rather give up their right to vote than give up TikTok. Well, I say, all right, let's take that to the next level. How about we do something that raises the voting age from 18 to 25, but you still get to vote at 18? If you just pass that same civics test that an immigrant has to pass in order to vote and tests aren't for everybody. So, so be it. Then you at least serve in the military or a first responder role for six months. Again, I understand completely understand. I don't necessarily agree with this idea, but notice how me disagreeing. I, I don't have to sling ad hominem. I don't have to get disrespectful. I simply don't agree. And I could, but I can see why he says that that makes total sense. Like in Israel, there's, there's mandatory military service in Israel for Israeli citizens, right? So I understand why he's saying this, right? That's my civic duty voting proposal. And, and, and the, the reason is, I'll actually make a prediction. I think youth voting in this country will skyrocket after from a very low level right now, it will skyrocket because you value something you actually have to earn. And I think that this is not a left wing or right wing point. It's logical. We all have duties as citizens, right? You know, we, 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 aspire to free market capitalism, right? Materialist advance. And that's the life I've lived as well, by the way. I, my parents came to this country with not a lot of money. I've lived the American dream. I've made a lot of money by building businesses. That's one side of what it means to be an American. But part of it is we also have duties to this country. And I think the more we wake that up, actually the voting age only became 18 in 1971 in the context of the right. Vietnam draft. Wow, wow. I actually didn't know that. They only made the voting age 18 because they wanted to draft 18-year-olds for Vietnam. So I just so, think reviving I think those asking, ideas is going to be good for us. Yeah. So what, let's, let's, yeah. let's prove your point. Nick, our camera guy, do you know the three branches of the Nick federal government? Nick is over 24, so it don't but, matter. But, but, but I'm just you, saying. What? He said, Charlemagne said it's over 24? Camera guy, do you know the three branches of the Nick federal government? Nick is over 24, so it don't matter. Are you shitting me? He, no way Charlemagne said I think it's over 24 branches of government. 
motherfucker, it's three branches of government. Legislative, which is Congress, and the House, you know, Senate, all those guys. Judicial, which is the Supreme Court, and Executive, Office of the President. It's not 24. Maybe this is why their political interviews are always so terrible. So I just think and Envy's asking a question like he doesn't know. He's like, well, who knows that? I have a political science degree, but this is something you learn in middle school. I think you're asking, I think you're asking a lot. So let's, 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 yeah. let's prove your point. Nick, our camera guy, do you know the three branches of the Nick federal government? Nick is over 24, so it don't but, matter. But, but, but I'm you just can't. saying, but nobody knows there are 24. Red, do you know? No. He said, nobody knows there are 24. There are three branches of government. Who? These are the people for the black and they represent the black and Hispanic community, right? These are the people who are interviewing politicians. If you watch this channel for anything other than them interviewing SoundCloud rappers and Lil Baby in them, you are misleading yourself. These niggas don't know it's only three branches of government. This nigga is like 40 years old, DJ Envy. If not older. And he's like, who knows? Three branches of... Is this over 24? There's three. What are three branches? Executive. Well, that, well, I got a test. I got a test I would, I would like to see if you're willing to pass. Um, because I believe, in, just as you believe in civic engagement... I, I believe in changing the ideas of what political opponents... And she's so disingenuous. Like, she came in mad already. ...opponents so look like... What should what they should look like are political candidates. Uh, are you willing to take a test with me quickly? Because I just have a couple of questions for you. I will. Um, so, Absolutely. So just, <laughs> and the way this is opening up, I have a feeling I'm about to fail it. But that's good. Yeah, so I'm saying the way the way, the way way y'all coming into this, like, y'all, y'all are so ditch, disingenuous... It hit different when you don't know it's only three branches of government. It hit different when you thought it was 24 branches of government, Charlemagne and Envy. It hit, it hit different. Good. Let's, let's do it. That's, that's right. Yeah. Um, so uh, just for clarity, I am an independent. I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. Cool. I think that's important for the premise of the argument because I know you did a lot of debating at, at Harvard. Uh, now she's trying to shame her. Oh, you did a lot of debating at Harvard. Uh, it's also, I also want to make so underhanded. I think it clear these are the same questions that Slimy. I asked, uh, liberal Democrat Marianne Williamson. So I want to make sure that we put that out there as well, just Fair to kind of set the foundation. I'm for open the to being humbled. Let's do this. Okay, great. Let's go. Um, so you mentioned, uh, you know, the pride of being an American and how important it is uh, to have pride in this country. I'm also a veteran, uh, by the way. Also a veteran. Who cares? Uh, for the United States. Shout out to the veterans, but that year, it has nothing to do with this combo. Air Force. So when is it that you voted for? A lot of people like to flex this I'm a veteran stuff as if they was in combat. A lot of these people were just in offices. And I know people in, in the military, and this is no diss to the military. I respect all of them if you don't volunteer your time, your body like that. But the people who be flexing it like this, oh, I'm a veteran, a veteran of the Air Force. It's like that, um, that Larry David sketch. Where he doesn't tell the, the military guy, thank you for your service. I mean, it's, it's that type deal. People who be flexing it like this, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, for the first time? I voted in 2020. Why does that matter? So you're how old again? I'm 37 years old. So for how many years you sat around and did not get involved at all? in? Sat around? Yo, just because you didn't vote doesn't mean you weren't involved. He could have lobbied. You know what I mean? He could have did grassroots work. He could have had a nonprofit. Like any civic engagement? Is that my understanding? A long time is the answer. And actually, I wrote. I mean, that's what I wrote this book about. I am, I am not holding myself out as some sort of model. I'm actually offering myself as a self reflection of my journey as a okay. citizen, to whom this country yeah. has given much. Right? As an adult, when you have kids, it changes your perspectives. I'm very honest yeah. about that. Absolutely. Okay. No problem. So let's go deeper into the self reflection. So you sat around for, and, and sir, I'm being as respectful. Why she just keep saying I sat around? He sat around. And then she going to say I'm being respectful. No, you're not. Like, respectful as I possibly can. Please don't take anything a, a and you hard don't even way. Have to I be. Just, She's throwing a stone and hiding her hand. Like, yo, you're just sitting around, lazy fuck. Oh, yeah, no offense, though. I can't stand people like this, bro. These type of people only sound smart to somebody dumb. Because like, you think it's they going to sound smart to someone who... Who thinks in, an, in a debate, the person who's speaking the loudest and getting the most gotcha moments is the one who's winning. That, that's what, that's this, this type of person, that's who they sound smart to. 
actual logical thinker see right through this, bro. You don't even yeah. have to be. So take it yeah. off. Oh. So you've been sitting around in the country sitting that around. my ancestors built for. And my ass, bro. Shut. Come on. I I, I gotta play this sound. Sitting around in a country that my ancestors built. I would. Shut the fuck up. Like, where are you going with this? Why are you taking this personally? Like, what is your issue? She miserable, yeah? About 20 years, uh, your parents came over as immigrants, brought you over. You made millions, uh, according to... Parents came over and brought you over. But she prefaced this by saying, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. They shouldn't even have somebody like her on interviewing people. Your uh, resume off of this country, and you have absolutely not been involved in civics. One, not voting. And two, let me just ask. Because he voted I in 2020. Earlier, you don't want to sit around at the debate and talk about accomplishments. Let's make the accomplishments pretty simple. In high school, were you ever a class president or take any leadership role? Because your opponent did. Chris Christie, he was the class president. So yeah. had Class president? <laughs> Who cares? Like, what? Have you ever taken any leadership at all? This is Breakfast Club, y'all. This is the hard-hitting questions on the Breakfast Club. I have, can, or just... can, can I just correct a couple factual things uh, sure. that are uh -huh. kind of important? My parents didn't bring me over to the country. I was okay, born in this country, off. and I'm Facts. No, I know you were born here in Ohio. So if you know he was born in, here in Ohio, why would you say his parents brought him over? Your brought parents me? were immigrants. Said, my apologies. Let him talk. Yeah, that's all right. You said your parents brought you over to this country. I yeah, thought my I apologies. Set that record I mean, they were immigrants, but let's they not go immigrants. down the water oh, hole. No, no, no. We're not going to Let's not go down the water hole. No, you was wrong. And mad disrespectful. I was going to correct a couple facts. And then the other thing you is. You were born here in Ohio. I was, born in, I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. That's right. Right. So yeah. you've been here your entire life. So the question that's is. Right. Did you take any leadership role in middle school, high school? Middle school? What? <laughs> Class what president, I did. Uh, yeah. I know you played tennis. What? What is it? Explain it to Student us. Student council, but you know, I think that this is <laughs> the yes. I have I've held leadership roles over my life, but those don't qualify me to do what I'm doing now. No, That's it kind of does. Okay, well, well, it kind of does. Well, let me. Well, I'm giving the test. I'm the test okay, administrator. All right, there you go. So it kind of does because when you go from second, you gotta let them ask, answer the question though. Dang, I want to go to the highest office. And I'll tell you, I've led companies as well. Is the other leader right. the well, main leadership right, role I played is is and, and I want to I want to talk about one early part of your premise that I also want to say mm -hmm. bring it to the country point the other points you, you use the word sitting around. Thank you. Let, let me make sure we still recording. I just want to make sure. Okay, we still good. We still good. I'm not somebody who's saying I've, I I want the next generation, my kids' generation, to have more civic duties when they graduate from high school and college than I did when I did. That being said, I wasn't sitting around. I've developed medicines, five of which are FDA-approved products today, Oof. one of which is a life-saving therapy in kids, Oof. 20 of whom die by the age of three if they're not treated, 70% <sighs> of whom now live lives of a normal duration, <sighs> one for prostate cancer. So <sighs> I don't apologize well, for making me, contributions. But right, well, I don't want you to filibuster yeah. that. No worries. Um, because filibuster. But he can barely even have time to answer the question. But when she start getting proven wrong... She's like, no, 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 I got to stop him, got to stop him. That's not the question yeah. that I ask, and I don't consider as a veteran, I'm talking about service. I'm not talking about what you Civics. did. To me, what he just said about, you know, what he's done in the private sector is way more important than what she's asking. She's asking, were you ever in a leadership position in middle school or something like that? What he just said is way more important than this question. I'm not talking about what you what you paid people to do with yeah. your company. So I'm not, not served, talking about I'm not served the country because that means the nothing to me. You do, you do what realize, I'm talking, she has, what she I am able to ask a question. She's been trying to ask a it. question, yeah. and she has asked a question, and he's answering it. But y'all keep interrupting. Oh, Envy, Envy, come on now. You've been talking over it. And Envy is a guy like he'll get real emotional during interviews. If he doesn't like the person, he he'll get real emotional. You could just see it on his face. I'm like, all we, we gave you the platform to let you see what you said. Yeah, I'm all ears. No, I was saying saying defense. <laughs> He's being attacked. Again, terrible Breakfast Club interview. This is a prototypical, terrible political interview by the Breakfast Club. They are known for having these terrible political interviews. I'm all ears. 
So your question, so my question again is, you're trying to, your your goal is to raise the standard and you're saying you want people to believe in country and you want people to have civic engagement. And sir, I just find it very telling that you haven't had any civic engagement at all and haven't been at all. And when I say sit around, I don't mean you haven't done anything. I'm talking about in regards to service because one thing about political office is- So if you weren't doing service, you were sitting around? This is a horrible question, bro. I want to change how people look at uh, politics and look at this country. I want to change how people look at politicians. And when I see that someone hasn't did anything at all to be of service to mankind, to take a leadership role, been a service to mankind. He did not. He didn't just say he created, uh, help create drugs that help save lives. You were talking about what he, what he, what did you do in middle school though? He's like, well, I created a drug that helps expand the. Infant mortality and help kids out. She's like, no. What did you do in middle school, though? But was you was you on a um, on the AVID? Were you president of AVID? Was you the class president? Well, it's not good enough to just be on city city uh, student council. Were you a leader? All but she just asked, were you on student council? She literally just asked that. That applies. Have you been? Again, this chick is gonna sound. I don't know who this is, but she's gonna sound smart to somebody only to somebody that's dumb. I'm like, yeah, girl, who you you talking over him? Anybody else who with a logical thinking brain is just looking at her like, bro, like, not only are you obnoxious, like your questions are dumb as hell, bro. Been able to get anybody in the room at any time from the high school gymnasium to Ohio, uh, high school leadership there to now. Have you been able to get anybody in a room to believe in this vision? I don't agree with a lot of your vision statement, but I do know you've been going around having these discussions and getting everybody emotionally worked up to talk about vision and debate. But I want to get to the practical. You're trying to go from preschool to, to president of the United States. You're skipping over city council, county council, mayor. You didn't learn from 2020 that that doesn't matter. You didn't just see a man and Donald Trump go from CEO to president. When Barack Obama was elected, they tried to they tried to say the same thing about him. Well, he's only been he hasn't been on the Senate for they they were saying the same thing. He doesn't have enough experience, but he became president, and then the president after him had even less experience and became president. It ain't rocket science, bruh. Governor, you want to go straight to the top. So my question, is this a PR? Is this for the PR, the perception of reality? Or have you, can you point to any leadership where you've been able to get people to believe in what you're talking about that they're not paid to do on any of these vision statements that you have? If not, then to me, it's just, it's a mute point because you're, you're telling- Mute point. I believe the term is mute point. You're holding a standard that you haven't met yourself. So if you're only- going to count government service you're absolutely no, not government right. service okay student council in the eighth grade ninth grade tenth grade. he just said he was on the student council were you a leader did you did you do anything to rally anybody did you fight for better lunch i did in the sixth grade with miss harris <laughs> yeah. i'm not talking about we don't we don't I care go all the way back from the fifth grade every every year sir because people who are in service to this country mm -hmm. if you're going to go around saying you want people to believe in this country that i signed up to mm -hmm. die for then i'll I want to make sure that you're holding that same standard. So not government, not political. Let's not get it confused. Yeah. I'm saying, have you did anything of certain? Well, she says not government, but then she says mayoral, council, this and that. She, <laughs> yo, she all over the place. That we can point to to say he is a good leader. Like Chris, and I'm not even a fan of Chris Christie, yeah. but he was the student council president in high school. So have you done anything of service besides yourself that has not benefited yourself? It's just a simple question. That's not benefited yourself, but you keep tooting your horn up on a service that you did in the military. But you're talking about him popping himself up. Stop it, so, man. I The acts of service that I have performed are small, so small that I don't even want to talk about them to boast. But yes, have I volunteered for this country? Yes, I have. I've always so been like, interested well, in healthcare. It's okay to Bethesda talk about the North, small things. I mean, I it, these matters. are small things, right? But thank you. For, oh, well, just, yes, let's just so, mention so, so, Bethesda, Bethesda North Hospital. Is really a no? No, it's not a no. It's just something I don't like boasting about. I, I well, volunteer. we're not boasting. We're, yeah, it's I'm an boasting. interview. You're boasting on your vision Directly. and everything Look, else. I think you boasted things... on the millions of dollars that you made. So let's just. <laughs> when did he boast on the millions of dollars he made? You're boasting on the service that you did in the military, which is crazy because I was supposed to be selfless service. But you keep bringing it up as if that makes you better than him or something. So what else? So I, I, 
sixth grade, I'll give you an example. I'll help you out. In sixth grade, Miss Harris, hey, uh, Miss Harris was slapped. Let me give you an example because maybe you're confused. In the sixth grade, maybe no, you're not letting them answer. Miss Harris was snatching papers from everybody in the classroom. So me, as a ten year old, I went to the principal and said, "I'm tired of Miss Harris." Bro, what are you talking about? <laughs> I organized the students around getting Miss Harris to stop snatching papers. Now there was a consequence what? for that. What? I got uh, suspended for five what? days for talking back, what? and I got. In Bro, we're not. Nobody's interviewing you. Why are you? What is she talking about, man? I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. Trouble got a spanking, and I was on punishment for months and months. We and don't care. Organizing people, so I want you to kind of boast about it the way you did the millions of dollars and said what you did with the drug, uh, the pharmaceutical companies. What? When did he boast on that? No, that was the answer that she he responded to what she was trying to say, and it made her question look super disingenuous the way he answered it. So she wants to pass it off like he was boasting. Yo, know, this, this chick is this is like a this is very evil, like what she's doing. Leadership and disingenuous. Again, if she sounds smart to you, like you're not a smart person at all. Point to that you've been able to rally anybody around anything that is of service that you did not pay anybody to do. I think that's important for the next president of the United States. Sure. So I've always been drawn to healthcare. That's why I ended up founding companies in that space. When I was in high school, part of what drew me into it was that I was a volunteer at a local hospital. I actually mm -hmm. became the leader of that group of volunteers that actually discharged women who had recently given birth. That was it. Nothing did, you do big to did you do anything we can point to to stand but, out? But, that, I want, but I want to say something about that because I say that in the book. If I'm being really honest, why did I do that in high school? A part of the motivation, I'll be just brutally honest with you, was part of the motivation was that's actually what allows you to get into a good college when you graduate. Is right. you want so to check the about, box so it was service. about you. So, so there was, was now, so, so there's, it, that's, and I'm admitting that in a way that very few other people do, but I got to be honest about it. That was a big part of why I did it. Yeah, yeah it I was graduate, about self, and I'm going to be honest. You got to let him answer the question. Give it back to the guy. She just like hearing herself talk for real, for real. If I'm going to be honest about it with you, yep. leadership is not about self. I agree and with so you on I, that. I what, I just on heard, that. what I just heard is that everything is about you. And to be honest with you, this is just a PR campaign, sir, to be honest with you. And I think you're, moved, you're trying to go further to the right because you want the Republicans to accept you as a, as a man of color. And I think the <laughs> only way you think you can do that is to be so extreme. I, I, Personal attacks uh, with, your opinion. Your, with your positions, and I think you need to do a little bit more work in, in service. I'll give it back to you guys. You failed the test, by the way. Because she asked, you failed the test, by the way. She she thinks she just got him so bad. She just thinks she got him so bad, bro. Like, no, you made yourself look crazy. Me a question, uh -huh. and then uh, and then you guys said you wanted to hear a response, but I think facts I have a of opinion. So just oh, I want to yeah. make sure you're all done before I respond to it. <laughs> yeah, because it's like yo. You ask a question and they start responding and you interrupt them. Then you say, no, don't interrupt me. You ask them a question, they respond. You interrupt them. They try to finish. You say, don't interrupt me. As, no, you interrupted them, bruh. No, just that? wanting to say that even then, I would still want you to point out, even at the yeah. hospital, something that you did that, that made you stand out. So first, she just wanted a leadership role. He said student council. She said, no, not student council. Then he said, okay, at, uh, at the hospital. Then she says, no, something that you stood out in. Now, if you mention something that he stood out in, she's going to say, well, who was affected by it? Well, this, this is just disingenuous. This is a bad faith question. On when actually taking a leadership role. But you, you already answered it. You said yeah. you did it because it was a motivation to get in college. Exactly. Which and, means and it was I'm about you. I'm very honest about that. But, I, so but everything's I, about, so everything has been about you. So, so this interview is about you, right? As me, a veteran. Let me as, a, as a veteran, again, this is the bullshit. Like, someone who actually served actually risked their lives, went to combat or did Medal of Honor, they don't do this, typically. They don't be like, well, as a veteran, as a veteran, as a veteran. She probably goes into stores and throws a fit if they don't have a military discount. Well, I'm a veteran, I'm a veteran. You keep saying, as a veteran, as a veteran, my military service, I risk my life, da 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 As if that makes you better than somebody. No. And a person who actually really risked their life and did that, they will not be throwing it out like this. They'll be a lot more humble. Tell you something, I appreciate it's very this. hard for me to follow leaders that, that make everything about them. So You're making this whole interview about you. You might want to work on that because there's a lot of veterans and Republicans. So you might want to work on that on that talking point and maybe do some volunteering while you're on the campaign trail. I'm going to give it back to um, Charlotte. She tried to have a mic drop moment. <laughs> Again, there's going to be a small sect of people. A lot of black people, though, because, you know, a lot of black folks is just... just 
they like this type of stuff. They feel like whoever is the loudest, whoever snaps the neck the most, won the argument. It ain't about who the loudest. If you got to throw ad hominem, if you got the red herring attacks, any logical fallacies, you've lost. If you can't let your opponent finish a sentence before you interrupt out of emotion, you've lost. A logical person can see that in debate. Like, oh, this person lost. I, it, it, once I want to be respectful. I want to make sure you got everything you wanted to on the table before I before <laughs> I, I got plenty. I can, if, if this was just us, we'd okay. be a lot. Well, you guys table. tell me. I'm I'm the go, guest go, on go, your go, show. You yeah, thank you. Good to speak. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You sure? Mm -hmm. You sure about that? If we're, if we're good. Yeah, we sure. So, I think there's a different worldview that we have, and I think the worldview is how one actually makes contributions in a country. Mm. I do not believe that there's a separate category of just if you're serving the country and then if you're acting in self-interest, that that's somehow sinful or wrong. I reject that vision. To the contrary. And that's facts. It's like, I'll let him go, I'll let him go. Let him go. Capitalism is the best system known to man to lift people up from poverty. I deeply respect and I thank you for your service to this country. I'm that's really what's showing here. Like, ooh, he thanks me for my service. Really, go watch that uh, Larry David sketch. Just YouTube Larry David Thank you for your service. That's the, the veteran who gets all sad because nobody thanked him for him ser for his service. That's who she is, bro. I'm grateful for it. I haven't served the country in the way that you have. But I think that the way you get ahead in capitalism, how did I develop a multi-billion dollar biotech company? It was by letting talk. Developing capitalism medicines that save poverty. people's lives. A lot of people What's say that? capitalism causes poverty. Yeah, I disagree with that. Okay. I disagree with that. I think that capitalism demands that you provide something to someone that helps them more than you're actually charging them for it. And look, <clears throat> I'm not, again, I've never voted for a Republican president ever, ever. And I'm probably a lot more liberal than a lot of you watching this who call yourself Democrats. If you voted, I voted for Bernie Sanders, even when he wasn't on the ballot, who's way more far left and Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden. If you voted for Joe Biden, you're not as liberal or democratic as you like to think you are. And I'm not even the biggest proponent of capitalism, but it's like people who who think, you know, these super young people on social media who think if you've done, if you're like landlords, for example, landlords are so evil, but there are landlords who, who are evil, but you also have to realize that landlords do a public good as well. These abandoned houses these rundown houses, if there wasn't a profit incentive for someone to come in and li liberate and upgrade these houses to make them li livable, thousands, if not millions of people would not have housing. So there has to be a profit incentive for someone to go out and do this or else no one else will. And that's kind of what he's saying with his medical company, his medical uh, profit history. Yeah, he made a profit from it, but there was also a public good. If there wasn't a profit incentive to make the best, safest medicine, would it get done as quickly? Look, when you go to the DMV, which is ran by the government, which is, you know, socialists, they want everything ran by the government. When you want, when, when you go to the DMV, there's no profit incentive to get things done quickly. Like, no one ca really cares. Like, they don't get paid more if they do a better job. Like, so they don't. But if there was a profit incentive, if there was uh, competitors and they had to risk losing uh, people going to other DMVs, yeah, the service would be a lot more better. There would be a profit incentive to improve. So, I, but if you think what Tesla and Figaro is, is, if you think she's smart, what she's saying, you're not going to even understand what I just said. You're just going to try to talk loud, snap your fingers and mic drop. <laughs> that's the only way. That's the a tried business and true model, sir. That's it not is a business service. model. It's not, I'm not that's saying not it's, service. I'm saying it's but having see, an impact on society. An elected official is service. That's the disconnect. That's right. So that now, that they... no, that's service. The person who who created the car, the automobile, it was both business model and a huge service to the country. The person who will create high speed rails and railroads in this country, they did a public good and they also. Made profit. That's hey, it, it, it's not black or white. Now I'm moving on to now I'm moving on to there are phases of our lives where we do different things. 
Well, I've you're been, moving straight all the way up to President of the United States. You know, I don't Let's view it as a hierarchy. First. I don't view it as a hierarchy. I don't believe in hierarchies. The hierarchy well, that, is the well, way the bureaucracy the works. I don't believe in hierarchies. So we have a difference in opinion. You also don't Let him speak, yo. Like, she's going to cut off and interrupt him. Then when he, when he tries to finish his point, she's going to be like, no, don't interrupt me. Here comes Envy. Yeah, don't interrupt him. Even service. Which a Yes. And that's where we're having a I, well, I disagree with you on that. You know, I just disagree with you on that. I do, I do. And she she don't want to have the conversation. She keeps trying to throw it back to Charlemagne. I think it's, I think it's whack that you're proposing to revoke voting rights uh, for 18 to 24 year olds unless they meet certain qualifications, but you never exercise your rights. Well, sh for sure. So, long. so sh most young people don't, is the whole point. Well, so, Charlemagne, true. let me ask the, you a question. The, the, do you, do you the think the most. The largest voter turnouts have been over the last couple of elections. Last few elections. They still actually. voted at a real, very low rate. But let me ask you a question. What do you think about high school students being required to pass the civics test? What's your perspective on that? The one that you propose? The one that every immigrant has to pass in order to enter the country. If every high school student has to pass that before they graduate, what's your take on that? I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Okay, good. Now, let me tell you something about the law as it exists today. Men in this country, not women, but men are required by law. Let that car pass. Oh, you, you niggas with these extra loud motors. No one thinks you're cool. Okay, I'm sorry. Register with the selective service. Facts. Age 18 to 25. That's the, the draft. We don't have a draft, but men have to register. If you don't, they put you in prison. At least they can. It's a criminal offense if you don't. My view is I would decriminalize that. I don't like the government telling you what you can and can't. Okay. Come on, get out of here, bro. Are you serious? Not, dude, that's not the American way. But if you want to enjoy the civic privilege of voting, then I think it is perfectly legitimate to say you have to at least know something about the country or have served that country, one or the other. Absolutely. Now, I think that what's, what do we actually care about, right? What do we, I mean, you can, we can do the personal well, attack thing. <laughs> hey, talk to him. We care it's about the country. Attack, we we care about the country. Mind you, she tried to say she knew the entire time this man was born in Ohio, but she tried to say his parents were immigrants and brought him over. Like he was on a Peter Pan bus or something. Voting is yeah. the cornerstone of democracy. I have well, not sir, yeah, excuse and, me. And that's right. I, and and, and you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is different sir, is, yep. sir, excuse me, because because this is important. Here she go interrupting everybody again. <laughs> she's 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 made, trying to make this about her. I have to pause it. But this is not a personal attack. That's okay. This is this is this is you, and I know and I know that as a Republican, you are certainly not soft. So this is not a personal. Attack. Oh, I know you're not soft. She's trying to call him soft. Attack. Stop yeah, it. This I'm is okay asking with about. Too. This is about asking about your background. <clears throat> And how it correlates, how it's relevant. She's so disingenuous. Want to serve this country because president is actually. So I have been an open book the in the last no, three years. Yeah, I know, Absolutely. and I'm going page by page. And I'm not saying that attack. I have not. I, I'm gonna let you finish. Yep. But I want to be clear, it's not an attack. Okay. Because you've been an open book, but that doesn't mean I have to like what's on the page. That's fair But enough. it's not an attack. I'm just reading the book. Yep. And so when when I hear somebody say you need to get to uh, either pass this test or do some type of service to the country and i spend hours looking you were in the um uh, phi beta kappa uh, did you have a leadership role in college the honor roll when somebody said service as the standard and they've done no service except to themselves that's a fair question it's a question that's and you just so i've been on the, i mean look i was on high school I, I was on high school student council yes absolutely were you a leader did you were you a leader i was a vice <laughs> were you a leader being on the council means you're the leader you're a leader you're a leader among students but she's gonna keep raising the bar if he said he was a leader She's going to say, well, where did you rank amongst all other uh, high school student council leaders in your region? If he said, well, I'll rank first. Well, what did you do in college? That's high school. What are you doing? It's a genuine, it's a disingenuous question. And I don't, I don't even know this guy. I don't know either, either of them. But she is just so obviously trying to ask questions in bad faith. I was president of my high school student council. Absolutely. I was the president okay. Okay, of the National right. Honor Society. I can I can go down the list. It's just that uh, that's what not... I was asking. You to... But those have nothing to do with being president. Absolutely. So I was I was a president of the National Honor Society. I was the vice president of my student council. I was a lead amongst the volunteers at the hospital. <laughs> but imagine she acts this in a presidential debate, right? On like CNN. This is this type of shit is only acceptable in a Breakfast Club where you have low IQ listeners, right? Who are not going to challenge what you say. Except me. Imagine if during a presidential debate, they said, uh, Mr. Vivek, what qualifies you to be president? And all the other candidates are standing next to him. And he goes, I was president of the Honor Society in college. I was president of the student council. It's like, bro, who gives a fuck? Like, what have you done, bro? Like, 
it's the type of question she asking though. What did you do in middle school? Where I served growing up, I was actually a leader in volunteer research over the summers. From my senior but year, all of that, but you already admitted all of that was to get into college. No, no, whether it was or wasn't, he answered your question. <laughs> but, I, but, but I am admitting it. I think that I know that's self service, important. though. I just want, do you understand the difference? It's self service, but it's service to others. Like we mentioned with the landlord, the landlord is fixing up a building so he can earn a profit. But in fixing up a building, he's creating a new living space for people who would not have that living space otherwise. The two can exist and do and do. A lot of, service and, and, service. I think, and I think the reality is, and I think we just all have to be more honest. When we many know. high school students are serving today, not all of them, but I think let's smoke it out. I don't like that structure where we actually oh, and I don't service like the with self-interest. And so, I don't like the structure. Let him answer the question, man. Somebody saying somebody need to give service as a veteran. I don't like the structure. As a veteran, we don't care. Of somebody That's going fair. to the we highest office of the land and have not served anybody at any time unless it was self-serving. So this is where we just have two different ideologies. I'm starting to think she joined the military just to be able to say as a veteran. So I was self-serving of her. Hmm. And I know your your and goal is to come here and get into. Here's yeah, my I perspective. That's why let me, we got let me different perspectives. Let me two guys. You got to leave in five minutes. I know. Oh, you okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let them wrap up. Yeah. Let me just say one thing: is she want to get out of this so bad? She just want to have her mic drop so bad. But when then when it's time for her to leave, when she says, "Okay, it's for y'all now," she just can't help but jump back in and interrupt somebody. You don't you your ass up. Run for presidency, and this is why I say I'm an open book. Is my job is to make sure people in this country know who I am and what I stand for. And I think that no, very few politicians on either party actually get that. He's turning up now. He's not, he not, he not backing down from me. He's turning up now. Let's go, baby. Job done. So what I uh. say is I'm an open book about who I am and what I stand for. Whether the people of this country want to vote for me, that's their question, not mine. That's their job to determine, not mine. And you're free not to vote for me. I expect you won't. <laughs> but I'm, nigga said, I don't want your vote, bro. <laughs> my job in this. Nor anybody like you. Keep it. Three books I've written over the last year in the conversation I'm having with you guys. Being far more honest than any politician that I know in the last 10 years in this country. And I think when I say we want to fix corruption, you don't know what the first step is. The first step is actually people being honest. So you guys know me. You know what I stand for. I haven't hit back on that. Well, the people in this country? country want to vote for it. That's their choice. Do you want to unite the country? I do want to unite the country. So why is like one of your marquee campaign proposals making sure black people can no longer benefit from affirmative action? <laughs> that's his marquee thing. That, that's like his campaign slogan. Black people, no more affirmative action. You see the way they answer questions there? When, when you study like communications a little bit, if you take a calm class, you learn there are things like closed-ended questions and open-ended questions. These are all leading questions, which are notoriously bad. Like, only bad journalists do leading questions or close-ended questions. But that's what they're... This is how they interviewed Bernie. Like, why don't, you, why don't you get along with black voters? Or why is Hillary Clinton more popular with black voters than you? Instead of, instead of making an open-ended question. Like, this is the Breakfast Club, though. Terrible political interviews. See, here's the thing. It's actually been a disastrous experiment. And affirmative action, their studies on this, has mostly only benefited, has mostly benefited, not only, has mostly benefited white women. So the idea that you're just taking it away from black people and black people only, that's wrong. But again, this is a nigga who thinks that there's 24 branches of government over the last 60 years. I've seen the impact that it's had. Unlike a lot of other executives, I've had senior executives in my company who happen to be black, senior executives in my campaign who happen mm -hmm. to be black. I actually went to a majority or close to majority black school first through eighth grade. There isn't a single one of those black kids or black colleagues that could not have achieved everything I have in my life. I firmly believe that to be true. And I have seen the unfair discrimination behind closed doors, the things that people will say behind closed doors, about somebody who would have had that position anyway, but was unfairly tarred with the taint of saying they got it because of a race-based quota system. I think that's unjust to everyone across the board. And I think the right way to do this is actually ensure equality of opportunity, educational access at an early age, which, by the way, we don't have in this country starting at an actual young age.
How about doing that in a way that's agnostic to race? That way we prevent seeing one another on the basis of a color of our skin, but we actually solve the real inequalities that we have. And you already know this chick is about to chime in. You just know she's going to pop in in the middle of somebody's sentence. But, 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 chill ass up. It's with inequality of opportunity, starting with education. So my view is, I think my approach is actually going to be more successful in lifting up more black Americans than have been the Lyndon Johnson approach of actually using race-based quota systems. So the Supreme Court does rule on uh, affirmative action and they do ban it. Who do you feel it benefits versus who it hurts? I think that it helps everyone if they end race-based affirmative action in college admissions. I think it will literally help everyone in different ways because it restores merit in the United States. Are we perfect in ensuring equality of opportunity? No, we're not. The fact that kids are trapped by the zip code in which they're born determining where they go to school is a problem which is why I favor universal school choice in this country, which has actually done more to help black Americans than has any affirmative action program. What's your thoughts on people saying that you got Don Lemon fired? Just terrible questions. <laughs> An open-ended question would be more like, what happened with you and Don Lemon? Here comes Envy. Everyone says you got Don Lemon fired. They're like, he's, he's so mad, it looked like he's about to cry. Like... Man, no. the, the New York Times reported that I had an open debate with Don Lemon with this. What CNN wanted to do with that is their choice. My view is, though, we need <laughs> he said, I, we had a debate. Whatever CNN want to do is what CNN going to do. Man, talk to him. Starts Big V. Saying in public, public the things that people are otherwise saying in private. There's a gap right now in the country. Let's admit it. Democrat, Republican, it doesn't matter. Be careful with that because a lot of people in your party going to start saying nigga out loud. What? I don't think so, actually. I would certainly hope not. I would condemn it if they do. I would condemn it if anybody does. Mm -hmm. All right? But what I think is we need to close the gap between what people say in private. Again, terrible breakfast club interview questions. This is what they're known for, bruh. Bruh, just stick to interviewing Lil Baby and Lil Hoo-Ha and them, bruh. Like, stay out the political because y'all are not providing no type of value at all and what they say in public that allows us to air our differences and then we actually find unity that way that's actually what i think unites the country not creating this culture of hush hush right say one thing in public and a different thing in private and i do reject don lemon's premise what did he tell me on set he said you can disagree with me when you have black skin and you've lived in this country whatever ethnicity you are but explain but it sir, to me I, 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 just I, reject I, I told you you know she's gonna interrupt she just can't wait till somebody finish she's like no i gotta cut him off i have to cut him off like i don't know how else to communicate i think but, we should but, sir, let's just let's just use a real example of just what everybody said you said you know people can have difference of opinion they yep. can have uh, you know, you want to unite people. I gave you a difference of opinion as a veteran, and you came back and said that I was personally attacking you. And that you are. You said his parents brought him here, amongst other things. You said, "Well, I'm not trying to call you soft." No one implied that, bro. Like you're implying that. Casting a stone and hiding your hand like a coward. That is a way of gaslighting. And She's actually gaslighting. That's the crazy part. She's the gaslighter here. Basically, you know, trying to set the, the idea that's that I true. was against you when I just had, that's the statement you made. And I'm and what I'm saying is, instead of us just having the debate, because see, I didn't talk about colors, which you probably expected when you came in here. I did not, I didn't talk. I, I, Like you probably expected. What? Why would you even say that? Really? Like, why would you? <laughs> I didn't. Well, that's fine. I didn't talk about color. I well, that's didn't get fine. All, all emotional about your vision because I really wanted to just talk about what you've done in service because you yourself has raised service as the number one thing um, that what people need to do in order to participate in the country that my ancestors built. My ancestors built. Bruh, you're taking credit for shit you didn't do. You didn't do that. And you said that I personally attacked you. So just to give you some advice, if you're going to say, hey, to give you some advice, this man, come on. Let's have difference of opinion. Let's be able to. I love everything you did. Don't I think, love the don't whole think thing. Because I good. had this a question productive. that it was a personal attack. Because oh it no, wasn't. it was. I don't think a question. I think this is great. Because you know what I said. What's well, did the you job? say personal attack? What's the I job? Sure is every correct. she's trying to pull him on a point. They're nitpicking. They don't want to talk about policy. He just told you what he did for service. Everybody needs to know. 
Yeah, don't he? Yeah, he's like, I'm not answering no more stupid questions, but I'm about to say what I need to say. <laughs> Who a candidate is and what they stand for. That's the candidate's Sir, job. Whether you vote for them or not, you that's this, your choice. Did you say I personally attacked you or did I hear it wrong? I just want to make sure. I did not say you personally attacked me. No, I said we have actual good. I wanted to know whether or not we were actually able to. You said sit around for 20 years. Facts. She said sit around. You've been nothing, doing nothing but sit around. She's like, I was a 10th grader. I did something as simple as this. What about you? Well, your parents brought you here. Yeah, bro. You're attacking this dude, and then you're gaslighting him like you didn't. At hominem. Been around for 20 years, but that's okay. I think that you know what? If somebody's running for U.S. president, I want to say this. Well, you, you can't well, handle it. Let him, let him finish. Again, she think if I if I'm the loudest, I'll win the debate. No, you just sound foolish. Said, so we'll we can keep going we'll with the, the personal and attacks. I, you did say personal attacks, though. So I, let's I, be honest. Remember, yeah. that's your number one thing, being honest. And I know you. I, know, I agree I, with I you. I know you have to go, but I do disagree <laughs> yeah. on what you said about affirmative action because I feel like without, without that legislation, I don't think black people stand a chance. We had to create the legislation. <laughs> the way he just said that makes he making it sound like black people are so dumb. Like, dang, without affirmative action, we don't stand a chance. Get your grades up. Get your reading levels up. Instead of trying to pin a, a, a politician down on what he did in middle school and acting all pompous because you served in the military and taking credit for what your ancestors did, go actually teach and help in, in your community if, if you're so for service. He's like, no, with us, affirmative action, we don't stand a chance. Asian kids didn't need affirmative action. And they was discriminated too. They was put in camps during World War II. They don't need affirmative action. Get on your grizzly, man. Instead of trying to do what Tesla and Figaro is doing. Legislation, we even have a chance. And I don't know why you have faith that without that legislation, things would be fair or on equal footing for, for black people. I think that most people who benefit from affirmative action White are women. the immigrants who came after Kennedy's immigration reform in the 60s. They are not descendants of slaves. They are people who came as immigrants like my parents did. Mm. And so I just think it is a broken system to say that you look like someone to whom a bad thing once happened and you're going to be favored over someone who looks like someone who once did a so bad you think thing. you your parents would have gotten the same shot without that legislation? I, I mean, so... It turns out that Asian Americans, Indian Americans like don't you want to benefit take away something from that benefited your parents, which directly. Benefited. He's literally answering it. You got to let him answer the question, bro. See, here's what I'm saying: is whether or not it's in our past. The question is, how do we actually move forward as one nation? And I do not believe it is race based quotas. Going. I believe I, it is I, economically I, I empowering I, all Americans. I, I think yeah. that legislation was put here to protect people that look like me, people that look like. Me. And it hasn't. Do your research, man. Affirmative action has been most beneficial to one women and two white women when you go deeper. Like, come on. To say that black black Americans don't stand a chance without affirmative action, you're just effectively calling black Americans dumb. Like, oh, well, we can't compete at all without affirmative action. Come on. I think you're ridiculous to want to get rid of. Here's what I would say is Lyndon Johnson's Great Society that this was part of, right? So, so affirmative action was part of it. There was a broader set of policies designed to help black Americans, I think have been disastrous for black Americans and all Americans. Well, you sir, know? one is the yeah. disaster. Let him finish. For you. And what Charlamagne is saying is your parents benefited from it. They did not. He just told you Asian Americans don't benefit if you would listen. As, as a point of fact, that's false. Indian Americans well, do no, not benefit no, no, from affirmative that, action. No, that's not as a point of fact. No, that's not as a point of fact. Because without without the liberties that black folks have fought for. To black folks have fought for. We're talking about affirmative action as a policy. She all she just wanted to keep going back to it. My ancestors did this. You didn't do it, bro. You. You did not do that. Which has... Basically, immigrants have been able to be able to prosper in this country because of that. But we're not going to go there. Let's just let's just say they benefited from being able. To so she's admitting that the policy has not worked to its intended purpose. She literally just admitted that without notice, without knowing it. He's like, yeah, black folks fought for it, but then other people are benefiting from it. Which means it's not working to its intended purpose. They have the freedoms that black people fought for. That's the bottom. And I'm not even necessarily against affirmative action. 
but the way they're trying to defend it is just not logically sound. And then in turn, it benefited you. And then your answer a moment ago was, well, let's not talk about stuff in our past. See, once it benefited you, you were able, you you moved on. I want to be that's honest why with the, you. guys want to get why, real. Let's why, get that's real. Why, My parents that's were. Why the heart, <laughs> that's why the heart of a servant. No, 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 sir. Because okay, the black people had to fall. That, yeah, that, it, get real. My, my grandparents lived, they were colon, they lived in a colonial society. Britain colonized where my grandparents lived as well. But I think that I don't do well by seeing myself as a victim of the white man because actually Great Britain happened to have colonized where my grandparents were actually colonized. I, I think I you're think he didn't say it. I think the so word so benefited your parents when they got here. That's right. What benefited, what benefited all of us is the fact that we have a free country where no, anybody is free to parents? achieve what they want. What be, I don't know what, be, they came to this country with not a lot of money. What benefited them was hard work and dedication. My dad faced layoffs when he was growing up. And see, this is the difference between some cultures and then these, I, I won't say but all black Americans, right? Because most of us don't think like this. I don't even like this term black community. People like this, I'm not in the same community as y'all. I'm over here somewhere else. Yeah, you know I mean, I would literally just rather be a lone wolf. I don't think like y'all, like we have very little in common, right? Outside of probably music. The people who come here and literally every person has been discriminated against, right? Slaves, the word slave is referring, the origin is referring to white people like in Yugoslavia, Slav, Yugoslavia, slave. That's where the root word of slave comes from. Slave is a, the origin refers to like Eastern Europe, like Yugoslavia, Ukraine, Czech, like over there near Russia, east, east, east of Germany, if I'm not mistaken, type stuff. Everyone has been discriminated against. Some people, like what he's saying, it, 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 I hate when people say it because it just it oversimplifies it, but it's literally the difference. Hard work and, ded and dedication versus seeing yourself as a victim. Black Americans have historically had hard work and dedication, but like this new generation... I'm not even going to say new generation as if I'm talking about kids. I'm like, Tesla Figaro, Charlemagne, Envy are just stuck in perpetual victim mode. At GE, right. he went to law school at night to be able to keep his job. What did that teach me? Affirmative action right. benefited him? I don't think affirmative action benefited him. Absolutely right. not. I think well, hard work. Hard work, yeah. And that's part of what I want to share with all Americans. I want to make this the country where no matter who you are and what your skin color is, you get ahead with your own hard work and commitment and dedication. Uh, that you get ahead uh, not on the color uh, of your skin, but the thing. content of your character. He has to go, guys. And that's what I want for America. Uh, one, so. one more thing. You, you, you told a voter that you were open to ending uh, foreign aid to Israel. Then it was reported that it was a misunderstanding. What happened? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm open to ending foreign aid to Israel. And the thing is, they're going to ask him this. But they probably don't even support Israel like this. They're trying to pin him because they've been directed that this, this man is, is not a friend of iHeart, of the larger corporation. So yeah, put them down. They're asking about Israel. How many of y'all actually support Israel? How many of y'all have actually put it free Palestine? A lot of y'all probably talk free free Palestine, bro, sometime in the past, but you want to try to pin this man on the, on the issue? Come on. Yeah, so I disingenuous. Said, I false reporting, actually. So I think oh, you never he, said that. No, I did not. I said that I was open to actually a broad strategy of disengagement from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. My general view is we fought a lot of pointless wars for a very long time. Ukraine's the pointless war of the moment. Correct. I think that the United States needs to disengage from parts of the world if it does not advance American interests. China's the top threat that we face, and we actually need to prioritize that in our foreign policy. All right. Well, we appreciate you for joining us. I appreciate you guys having me. Uh, how do I say? Do I don't want to say your name right. Huh? Do you mean that? I do mean. Here he goes. I, I don't know how to say your name still. I, I don't know how to say it, even though you just told me 30 minutes ago. Even though I'm supposed to be prepared for this interview. How do you, how do you say this? This envy. Huh? On beef jerky. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, how you say this bullshit again? What the fuck is your name? Come on, man. These dudes is clowns. I mean that actually, because we don't do this enough. Okay. Right? Yeah. So I do mean that. And I will come back if you guys will have me when yeah. I'm in New York oh, City. Of course. Because to your point, the Republican debates would be way worse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not risk, Chris. I mean, we, we, we got to get real with each other. She loved Chris Christie. Chris Christie. Chris Christie. 
Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Jay, Chris Chris is going to ask about your background, so might want to start... Might want to start volunteering on your free time. Start volunteering. No one's going to ask about what he did in middle school. Only you, bro. I, I, I don't believe in virtue signaling. I am <laughs> I'm an open book. Period. We're all yeah. imperfect human beings. We're an imperfect country. We aspire to be the best version of yeah, ourselves. Yeah, that's not virtual and signaling. Those no, days. let him lay in the interview. She just like hearing herself talk. She, she got to have the, la the last word. Shame, insults, guilt, the need to be right. It's very strong with this one. Sir, that's just a question. You know, and you need to aspire to do something other than something that benefits yourself. That's all. If you want to say you're going to serve the country. The president is a service role. It's, here's, it's, here's, not, it's not running a business. So here's the positive I'll give you. I think your message is powerful for young Americans across this country to hear. And that's no, what I'm my message take. is right for that's you. That's actually what Somebody I'm going to take from this. <laughs> no, my, me my message is for you because you're saying that people need to reach a certain yeah. level of service to be able to vote in the country that my ancestors. My ancestors. And by the way, I'm a veteran. As a veteran, fought and died for. So my message is not for you. See, I don't do visionary messages. I do direct straight shot. The host straight shot, no chaser. My message for you is. By the way, here, here's me putting. Come on, man. She's doing everything she's accusing him of. Shameless plug. Why? Why? If you're going to require people to be a certain age to vote, you should have been able to meet that. My message for you is if you're going to say that either if you can't do that, if you can't pass the test, then you need to be able to uh, provide service to your country. You should have been able My to provide service to My message to you is if you disagree with me, you don't have to vote for me, but I respect your view. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't want your vote, bro. And we need to actually yeah. have a country where we need I, to have no, this debate absolutely in a way, with, in a way that doesn't personalize did an interview. it. That's all. I just wanted to point out the discrepancies on your platform versus what you've actually done. Because what that does I want matter. For the country is I grew up in this country and i want, I want to actually this, i want this lead the next though. generation to be proud for you. well i appreciate See, i appreciate, want it for you. i appreciate you i want this for you, I want this for for you. you. and yeah, i am I and i'm in this because i actually want to give back to a country that yes has allowed me to succeed in it and i want to and make I'll, sure that the next generation of americans leader, lives that same dream thank you very and much as a veteran i, I want you to be a leader and i want you to serve this country before you tell everybody else they got to serve it. That's all. We just all have right. a difference of opinion. I appreciate your opinion. Thank hey, you. Is Vivek, did I say that right? It's Vivek. Ramaswamy. Yeah, it's Vivek Ramaswamy. You visit Vivek2024.com. You'll learn more about the campaign. And, and if the ideas speak to you, then come on and sign up. All right. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Appreciate it. Another horrible political interview by the Breakfast Club, whether they are asking Hillary Clinton softball questions about Beyonce and Steve Harvey, or rather they're letting Joe Biden go unchecked by saying, if you're if you don't vote for me, you're not black. This is another terrible. And trust me, I don't know the Tesla girl. I've heard Killer Mike say her name like one time before. I don't I didn't even know what she looked like. I don't know Vivek. I'm not a Republican. I've never voted for a Republican president. This interview just made him look good. And the thing is, I actually agree that I don't even think he actually wants to be president. I think this is like an Andrew Yang type of thing. I think he's doing this to advance his name, business interests. I don't think he truly wants to be president. But the interviewing skills are so piss poor. Breakfast Club. Stick to interviewing Moneybag Yo and whoever the fuck is rapping and leave the political interviews to people who actually have a genuine interest. This is so biased and so terrible. And the fact that you're feeding this to your audience, your impressionable audience, is extremely sad. That's all I got. This is top five wrapupsite.com. Be sure to subscribe if you have not already. Peace.